Blessed the kingdom, the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our holy father, Francis, Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop John, for the venerable presbyter at the diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. O Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and on this holy church of Master, and show us and those who pray with us the riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. I shall thank you.
sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim God our Savior, O Son of God, born of the Virgin. Save us to sing to you. Alleluia. Wisdom, let us be attentive. God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever.
Let us be attentive. Peace be to all. Wisdom be attentive. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. In wisdom you have made them all. Hear the church and bless God. Oh, Lord, your love bring God is wondrous in Let us be attentive. Peace be to your reader. Don't be attentive. Reverend Father, bless the proclaimer of the gospel of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist, Matthew. May God, through the prayer of the Holy, glorious, glorious Apostle and Evangelist, James, grant that you proclaim the word of his great power for the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Let us be attentive. At that time, after the astrologers from the east had left, 
The angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph with a command, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you otherwise. Herod is searching for the child to destroy him. Joseph got up and took the child and his mother and left that night for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Once Herod realized that he had been deceived by the astrologers, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys, two years old and under in Bethlehem and its environs, making his calculations on the basis of the date he had learned from the astrologers. What was said through Jeremiah the prophet was then fulfilled. A cry was heard at Ramah, sobbing in loud lamentation, Rachel bewailing her children, no comfort for her, since they are no more. But after Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt with the command, Get up, take the child and his mother, and set out for the land of Israel. Those who had designs on the life of the child are dead. Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and returned to the land of Israel. He heard, however, that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as king of Judah, and he was afraid to go back there. Instead, because of a warning received in a dream, Joseph went to the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called Nazareth. In this way, what was said to the prophets was fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. So just to let you know who I am, maybe first. <laughs> I'm Brother James Dominic Rooney. I'm visiting from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a Dominican friar and a deacon. Uh, and Father Miron, thank you very much for, for letting me preach today to you all. I think probably all of us have had the experience. We were all writing Christmas cards not too long ago. I was uh, myself writing some Christmas cards, and all the brothers and I at the monastery, we were sitting around watching the Muppet Christmas Carol, which I know is a, a classic. It sets the scene in Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol, I think. You don't have to have seen it to know Ebenezer Scrooge, the very famous character. It, right in the beginning, after going after these people and his workmen at his, at his office, he goes home and he goes to his, his chambers and his apartment. They're all old and moldy. He goes around first thing with a little lamp looking for thieves who are trying to steal his money. He attacks his own uh, dressing gown thinking it's a thief. He has poor moldy bread and gruel. And then he, he goes to bed and Charles Dickens uses this lovely thing. He drifts into the empty silence of a dreamless sleep. It makes perfect sense for us later after hearing the empty silence of a dreamless sleep, when Scrooge sees his old partner Jacob Marley, the ghost, come up from hell, that he can't believe his eyes. He thinks it's a dream. He doesn't know what to make of it. He even uses this phrase, it must have been a bit of mustard or some sort of indigestion. The senses are so easily deceived. Everything must be a dream because I can't have dreams. All his beliefs, his conviction, his whole life prepared him to never be able to see Jacob Marley's ghost, let alone anybody else in his life. He was the center, him and his money. He prepared his whole life to only understand everything to kind of be a dream. Joseph, on the other hand, Saint Joseph, in some sense lives in dreams and we never see his, his life before the dream. We only see his life after his dreams. His life is full of dreams and angels, maybe it would seem at first, but his life, it seems, is obedience. Prior to this angel coming to announce to him that his wife was in fact pregnant with the Holy Spirit, the Blessed Virgin, Joseph doesn't say ever had a dream, ever had a vision, ever, ever had any kind of miraculous happening to him. He was probably a fairly ordinary person. 
But when he has that first dream, he responds to it. And his whole life, he gets all these angelic visitations, probably until the moment of his death, which is not described in Scripture, but which we have a lot of pious legend about him, the Blessed Virgin and Jesus, as the patron of a good death, that his life kind of ended in reality because of the way he responded to his dreams. It was maybe the beauty of those dreams that I think captured something in Joseph and the beauty that he responded to. It's maybe something to be marveled at in the 20th century. Some of the greatest wars against beauty and dreams were fought. I don't think we think about that, but the, the great dictators of the 20th century, Hitler and Stalin and even Mao Zedong, they fought against the power of beauty, among other things, the power of dreams. Some of the first people to be destroyed in any communist regime, in any Nazi regime, were like philosophers, religious characters, novelists, artists, were suppressed, destroyed, harshly, cruelly, without remainder, beauty needed to go in order for totalitarian dictatorship and raw power to, vic to, to attain victory. Herod, in this gospel and in prior places, even though at points he was captivated, it says, by the beauty of John the Baptist's preaching, his words were beautiful to him, in this particular passage that we read today, he crushes, tries to crush, any power of those dreams that might have taken root, the dream of the Messiah, the Christ, because it would threaten his political power. And he does something that's so horrible. We, we record it, we tell it all the time, the massacre of the innocents. Scrooge, of course, crushes other people's dreams in the Christmas Carol. There was the great novelist Alexander Solzhenitsyn who wrote in his uh, Nobel Laureate Address, he talks about the power of beauty. He quotes a phrase from the, the great Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky, beauty is the only thing that can save us, is what Dostoevsky said. And Solzhenitsyn says, well, how can beauty save us? And he meditates on it, his lecture, and he ends by saying, the power of lies to deceive is not the power of beauty. Lies might look smooth and chic, a good political program or a letter, but eventually they kind of collapse. People might be able to put some faith in these things, but it's really no faith at all. They only have faith in themselves, like Scrooge did. They can put off the appearance, but they can't have the living force that something truly beautiful can have. Because the things that are truly beautiful point beyond themselves to the unattainable, to God, like an icon. All the icons around us here, windows into another world the power of beauty to captivate us, to save us. Truth, beauty, the dream of truth, lives in eternity. It's an eternity that creates, that draws out a future. Lies, those dreams of Scrooge, those lies have a past, like Scrooge did, but no future. They live eternally in something like a dream, mistrusting other people, mistrusting themselves. Only beauty, the dreams of truth, can save us because they aren't of human origin, as St. Paul talks about. He was captivated, St. Paul captivated by the revelation, the dream of Jesus Christ to change his life, the power that convinced Joseph to leave his homeland in Israel and go out to Egypt, the faith born of those dreams of beauty and truth is a faith born not of a human dream, and that's the distinction, a human dream but of God's dream, a dwelling place of angels. Because we know celebrating Christmas, God made himself little in order to enter our own dreams, to be the dream of a child, a manger, a poor person, a poor human being. The power of the beauty of the dreams of truth is precisely in that powerlessness, the being little that God made himself, the infinite, the all-encompassing, dwelling in unapproachable light, coming into finiteness. In the Christmas Carol, one of the great scenes that sets up Scrooge's character is when the ghost of Christmas past comes and takes him back to a point in winter in Christmas one year 
And the most tragic figure in, I think, all of the Christmas carol, which is Scrooge's old beloved bell. And because I sat around crying, sobbing with the other brothers when we watched this in the Muppet Christmas Carol, they've got a beautiful little song that sums it all up, where Bell and Scrooge are standing there as young people together, and Bell sings this beautiful little song that, not musically too much, but has these beautiful lines, when love was gone, it was almost love, it was almost always. Yes, some dreams come true. Yes, some dreams fall through. And she leaves him, and Scrooge, the young man, is so preoccupied with his newfound money, he doesn't even notice that Belle, the only person he ever loved, the only person it seems he ever would love, leaves his life forever. And Scrooge has ignored it. But the interesting part is not that, but what happens slightly afterwards. Scrooge comes behind Belle, as she's singing this song and sings a little duo. Michael uh, Carey, I can't remember what his name is, but the actor does a duo with the actress that plays Belle. The power of that dream, even lost, is so much that it changes Scrooge's life. It didn't need to die. Christmas can seem to come and go with not much left but maybe the smell of its passing. The beauty was there. And maybe we knew it once. Maybe this Christmas wasn't the greatest one that came into our lives, the holiest, the one that brought us into contact with God. But maybe we knew that power once, or at least we have that dream somewhere in the back of our minds. The naivete, the enchantment, the dream of what our lives could be, of what a world with Christmas eternally could be. Perhaps the opportunities missed, the loved ones we forgot to call or we neglected throughout the year. The love, the prayer to God forgotten in my own life, maybe even the secret double lives some of us lead in small ways with those little dreams of lies or even the dreams unfulfilled that we always had but we never acted upon. St. Joseph reminds us that such dreams, the dreams that were almost love, almost always, can always be changed. Because the power of beauty, the power of these dreams, is that they're not our dreams about God, about salvation, but instead they're God's dreams about us. We need to make ourselves big enough to enter into God's dream, to take that time to pray, to offer ourselves to God, to live every moment in union with Him, because if we do this, if we open our lives to God, our greatest love, our greatest priority in life, and make him the center of everything we are, if we live in that truth of the dreams of truth, the power of eternity, the power of beauty, like Joseph, our dreams can become a place where angels feel at home to dwell. And let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, Lord, have mercy. O Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop John, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers and for all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Again, we pray for the people here present to await your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For your merciful loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. The Lord God, remember in his kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Poporum, our most reverent Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop John, the interpriest of the Ecuador Monastic Order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God Almighty, who alone our holy receive the sacrifice of praise for those who call upon you with their heart. Accept also the prayer of us sinners, bring us to the holy altar, enable us to offer gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins. And for the people's failings, make us worthy to find favor in your sight. 
that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of grace may rest on us, and these gifts here are present and on all your people. Grant us through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may profess the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence and undivided. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. Let us stand to write, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. Mercy, peace, a sacrifice of praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just. It is proper and just to sing to you, to bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship, that we place your dominion for your God, ineffable, inconceivable. Invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, yet ever the same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being and again raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know, for the manifestation and benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels and so thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six winged, many eyes soaring up on their wings. Singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn of Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts, and then earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name 
also crowd is these plus he powers love and kind master and say <coughs> holy are you and all holy you and your only begotten son and your holy spirit holy are you and all holy magnificent is your glory you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting he came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf on the night he was betrayed or rather when he surrendered himself for the life of the world he took bread into his holy and all pure and immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. Remember, therefore, the same command, and all has come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the sin at the right hand, and the second coming glory. Offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. We praise you, we bless you, we thank you, O Lord. And we pray to you, our God, pray to you. Moreover, we offer to you the spiritual and body sacrifice and we implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us. Reverend Father, bless the holy bread. And make this bread the precious body of Christ. Amen. Reverend Father, bless the holy chalice. And that within this chalice the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Reverend Father, bless both. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, then bring about a spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, and confidence in you not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer this spiritual sacrifice for those departing faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and prophets, their spirit brought to perfection in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, that Eutokos and the Virgin Mary, Among the first, O Lord, remember, Holy Father Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop John, preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health for many years as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. Remember, Lord, the city in which you dwell in every city and community and the faithful living in them. Remember, Lord, those who travel by sea, air, and land. The sick, the suffering, the captive, grant them salvation. Remember, Lord, those who bring offerings and perform good deeds in your holy church, and those who remember the poor. And upon all of us, send down your mercies. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise and most honor the magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. 
the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. <coughs> now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated that our God who loves us all may receive them on his holy, heavenly, and mystical altars an aroma of spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity in the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To To you, most rule of us all, we commit our whole life and hope, and we implore, pray, and treat you, make us worthy to partake with our conscience of your heavenly <coughs> and awesome mysteries from the sacred and spiritual table. May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the, for, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may, with confidence and without condemnation, dare call you Father, God of heaven and Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. And we give you thanks, O invisible King, for by measurable power you have fashioned all things and great things of mercy, or brought all things of non existence into being. Look down from heaven, the Master, upon those who bow their heads to you, for they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to you, dear Son God. Therefore, O Master, make smooth the good of all the paths that lies ahead according to the need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, cure those who are sick, O physician of souls and bodies. Through the grace, the mercy, and loving kindness of the begotten Son, with me are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. <coughs> holy gifts to holy people. Oh. One is holy, one is Lord Jesus Christ. To the glory of God the Father. I believe and confess that you are truly Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners before I am the first. Accept me today as a partaker of your mystical supper, O 
Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is come. And as we do Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. We have seen the true light. We have Blessed is our God, always, now and ever, and forever.
Arise, now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank you, O Master, Benefactor of souls, who love us all this day. You have made us worthy of heavenly and immortal mysteries through a prayer's intercession of the glorious Theotokos and the Virgin Mary. And for your saints, may straight our path come from us all in fear of you, guard of life and safeguard of steps. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctify those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your church, to the priests, to our government, and to all your people. For all generous given and ever perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, and we give glory, thanks, and worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, <coughs> now and ever, and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, who for our salvation was born in a cave in Bethlehem, which would lay in a manger. Have um, <coughs> mercy on us and save us through the prayers of his most pure mother, and of the Holy, our Holy Father, John Christopher, Archbishop of Constantinople, <coughs> of, the, of our Holy Father, and the close the patron of this church, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Amen. In your compassion, we take refuge, O Virgin Theotokos, despise not us. Christ is born. Glorify you. Thank you for beautiful liturgy. Thank you that you came to worship our Lord. At first, I would like to express my thanks to Father Deacon James Dominic, who is spending his vacation here in this area, and he came over to serve during this liturgy. So thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to have a deacon. I would like to wish happy birthday to Doris Borotkanicho. We were celebrating yesterday with Doris. And to Eugene Senderak. Happy birthday, Gene. And God bless you. Pray for him because big things are coming in his life. We will see, you know, how he behaves, you know, still. He has to be very good because we have him in our hands now. Happy birthday, may God bless you all your steps. I would like to express my thanks to each of you for all these wishes and cards and gifts connected with Christmas time. And it was very 
very nice and very kind and well well thank you i i know that these words are enough so it's not enough but i will be sorry the next liturgy next sunday liturgy will be offered for all of you in my name you know and in the name of my family and not on all liturgy you know that i have said the news to today our member Irene Tokar, she died yesterday and the funeral will be on Tuesday at 10 o'clock here in the church. So please come over to pray for her soul. Even probably many of you don't, didn't know her because she was previously a member of St. Michael's and she's an older lady. She wasn't coming here, but she is a member, part of our parish family. So if you have time, please come and pray for her soul. And I would like to invite you on, on Wednesday, we, we have New Year's Eve, and there will be liturgy, a vigil liturgy for New Year's feast. And it's a good opportunity to start, to finish old year and to start new year in uh, with God. I really cannot forget one of not what this Christmas Eve which we had in my second parish it was you know at 11 15 11 30 we went to church before midnight. The church was full totally full even from the bar, people who had party there, they interrupted the party and they came to the church to pray and to receive blessing at midnight. And then we, well, we went home and we continued our parties again. I know that it is not so easy to do something like that here because we are so far from the church. But this liturgy can be opportunity to give thanks to God for last year and to ask him for blessing for new year. And especially if this, we are celebrating feast too. Please come, find time for that. Have a wonderful Sunday. May God bless you. To servant of God, Father Deacon James Dominic, to servants of God, Doris and Eugene, to servants of God, all members of this parish, and to all our visitors, grant, O Lord, many years. God grant them many